hardy realm. Steeped in a time-honored tradition, combining science and technology. So that bottle's going to spin a few times to get labeled. Art and passion. You cannot imagine how much fun we have making rum. A multi-billion dollar industry owned by one family. And today, some family members reunite to create their best rum yet. A new blend celebrating their 150 year history. Now, get an exclusive look behind the back door at Bacardi's Mega Factory. This is the Cathedral of Rum. Bacardi's main distillery near San Juan, Puerto Rico. Here they produce more than 200 million bottles of rum a year to sell in more than 100 countries. A new shift begins. On a typical day, they process more than 150,000 liters of rum. Adelante para yo, Gomez. And the man in charge is Joe Gomez. I've been uh, making rum for 32 years, so I guess uh, passion has to be a, a very important part of it. He's the maestro, or master blender. All Bacardi rums are blended from various rum stocks. And it's Joe's job to mix the stocks to ensure the rum we buy at the store lives up to the Bacardi standard. It's really, uh, it's lovely. Today, he faces a new challenge. He'll help the eight retired Bacardi family master blenders create an historic new blend to commemorate their 150th anniversary. In preparation of their visit, Joe selects some of his finest rum stocks the family will use for the new rum. We are very excited and looking forward to, uh, to that meeting. Meanwhile, across the plant, Jose Class is busy with the everyday business of making the rum. He's head of production at Bacardi. Almost every bottle of rum starts with him. And he relies on technology to help keep the rum at a consistent flavor profile. Can you please uh, send the first molasses tank truck here? And it all starts with the delivery of fresh molasses. Mira, pásate al del lado izquierdo, al nuevo. This is actually the sugarcane molasses. And this is actually our uh, raw material for rum production. It's like honey made out of sugarcane. Every year from November to April, Bacardi buyers scour the tropical countries of the world in search of the highest quality sugarcane. Machines harvest and process it. They place it in the sugarcane crushing machine, where it's pulverized to extract every last drop of the sweet juice. The liquid is boiled and turned into molasses. Lab technicians check the viscosity, ensuring the consistency is just right for the sugar to convert to alcohol. The molasses then travels to the Bacardi plant near San Juan, Puerto Rico. This is gonna be pumped up to the fermentation area where we're gonna put water, yeast, and we're gonna turn it into rum. The rum is produced on a 51-hectare facility 
divided into six main production areas. The first stage is the fermentation house, then the distillery, the filling station, the aging warehouse, filtering, blending, and the final bottling in Jacksonville, Florida. Bacardi pumps more than 227,000 liters of molasses into the fermentation house every day. And Jose's job is to take every drop of the black sap and turn it into alcohol. Jose mixes the molasses with water. At this point, the controller adds yeast, which turns the sugar into alcohol. This strain of yeast is under tight security. Biochemist Rebecca Santini is only one of six scientists at Bacardi with the privilege to work with it. We have to have a lot of security because this is our baby. This yeast was discovered and cultivated over 150 years ago by Bacardi's founder, Don Facundo Bacardi Masso. This is very special for us. This is the, the only yeast that we use. This is the Bacardi yeast. When it's ready, she sends the yeast to the fermentation area where Jose Class stands by. Adelante, Hector Martinez, para Class. Jose gives the green light to start the fermentation. Hector, por favor, indicame los tanques que se encuentran fermentando en este momento. Buenos días, señor Clad. Está fermentando en este momento. El tanque esto es el más reciente. The yeast eats the sugar, converting it to alcohol. This is the first step of turning the molasses to an alcoholic brew called distiller's beer. The computers help ensure a consistent product. We have been able to achieve the same rum with the same quality for 150 years. The way we do that, we start here at the fermentation stage. What I have here is a tank that was just filled half an hour ago. So this tank is just starting the fermentation process. Oh boy, this tank is really fermenting pretty good. As you can see, CO2 is really high. I can't almost breathe here. This natural chemical reaction releases the odorless and invisible gas, carbon dioxide. If I just uh, put my face in there, I'm gonna be in shock. I'm not gonna have any oxygen to breathe. It's uh, telling us that the carbon dioxide levels are above what uh, are supposed to be in a working environment. So right now I need to close this tank. The natural reaction also causes a rapid increase in heat. Actually, this heat is not uh, very good for the yeast, so we need to remove that heat. If he doesn't remove the heat, almost 190,000 liters of distiller's beer will be ruined, and there will be no rum. So Jose must keep the temperature between 31 and 35 degrees Celsius. It's a delicate dance that requires careful monitoring of the yeast, sugar, and alcohol concentrations. I'm looking how well the fermentation is going by an increase in temperature and a decrease in sugar content. More alcohol is produced as the sugar content decreases. But too much alcohol kills the yeast. If done correctly, Jose can produce up to 1.9 million liters of distiller's beer a day. And when a batch is complete, Jose pulls up to the keg and pours himself a pint. At this point, it's not tasty, but it smells amazing. Now I'm gonna get this sample 
to the laboratory for some initial testing. Now that the fermentation is complete, Jose can move on to the next step, distillation. The making of Bacardi rum has always been a family tradition. And today is no different. The retired family master blenders have arrived to create the 150th anniversary special edition rum. They're all related to the founder of Bacardi. And each has worked as a master blender, but haven't been back in years. Rum is in their blood, and their passion has never waned. You can feel the fumes talking to you, you know, they, they call, this is the spirit that we give to the gods, you know. I hadn't felt it in a long time, but uh, it brings back so many memories. It's like a miracle. You have the, uh, the, uh, the spirits of the, of the, of the rum, it turns into a very mellow and nice uh, tasting rum. The special new rum will be made for all family members. Once again, keeping the heritage alive. While the family royals get a VIP tour, Jose goes to the laboratory to test the fermented brew. Before he sends almost 190,000 liters to the distillery, he checks the alcohol content of his sample. We have a standard of how much alcohol should be produced in our fermentation process. So while looking at this, we know if uh, we're not producing enough alcohol, there might be a problem we might need to fix. They start by boiling the distiller's beer. This causes the alcohol to evaporate and the vapors to rise to the top. It then travels down a condenser where it cools and becomes the distillate. What we're doing here is we're separating the alcohol from the beer. So if I don't have as much alcohol, then I will not have as much alcohol here. Simple. Very simple. <laughs> and I went to, to, to school for that. <laughs> the result is a clear, fiery, 150-proof distillate, also known as a rum base. Once he determines the sample has the proper alcohol content, Jose can move on to the next stage. Sending almost 190,000 liters of distiller's beer to the distillery to make the base. This is the five-story distillery. Adelante, piña. Te veo en el cuarto de control ahora. And Jose manages it from a central control room. His team monitors each step of distillation to ensure a consistent Bacardi product. Here, they make two distinct rum bases. One rum base gets distilled just once in an industrial-sized version of the laboratory test. Inside the still, the hot distiller's beer flows past metal plates at around 93 degrees Celsius. Just like the mini distillery, the alcohol turns into vapor, which then separates from the distiller's beer and rises to the top. The vapor then flows into the condenser and it turns into a potent liquid, which flows back down to the bottom of the system and is sent to a storage tank. This base is called aguardiente. It has a distinct flavor and aroma that provides the backbone for Bacardi rum. The second rum base goes through a five-step distillation process where it's purified and becomes a high-proof alcohol. Because of the multiple steps, this base is called redistillado, literally meaning redistilled. Back in the control room, Jose's team monitors over 300,000 liters of alcohol through distillation. At the beginning of this process, the beer has about 10% alcohol. Then we separate those alcohols into the different distillation columns, and the product that we get out of it, it's between 75 to 95% uh, alcohol. The distilled rum bases then travel through the pipes and into 300,000 liter tanks. 
Jose's job is complete, but the rum's journey is not over. In order for them to be called rum, they have to be blended at different proportions, under different conditions, and that's something that uh, the blender will have to tell you, and then kill you. Now, master blender Joe Gomez takes over. We need to make two different products to start with, because that's what really gives uh, Bacardi it's a flexibility in terms of how many finished products, how many Bacardi rum we can blend. They look the same, but are distinctly different. We have to smell the product to be able to tell them apart, because as you can see, when they are fresh, they are both colorless. Aguardiente is where the flavor and the aroma associated to rum really is, versus redestilado, which is a quote unquote, almost neutral product. It's Joe's craft to blend the two rum bases and turn them into a Bacardi rum. Whether it's a light rum or a dark rum, the final blends of Bacardi come from these two rum bases. Turning a rum base into the Bacardi rum you buy takes the next critical step, aging. Adelante para Joe Gomez. To begin the aging process, Joe Gomez puts the rum bases into these wooden barrels. There is gonna be a significant transformations inside the barrel, that they are gonna change the flavor and the aroma of the product. They are gonna change the color and the appearance of the product. Barrels are very important to the rum production process. But Joe doesn't make new barrels. He buys used. And surprisingly, he gets them from his competition, American bourbon and whiskey producers. We cannot expose uh, fresh rum to brand new uh, barrels because the, the barrel will imprint the fresh rum with a profile that is not gonna be typical of rum. These are a uh, barrel that has been used once, made of white oak, totally handmade, and with a uh, medium toast inside. These barrels are made at a factory in Louisville, Kentucky. Inside an enclosed room, the barrels are toasted like bread, browning the wood at a low heat. This brings out the sugars and caramels. But toasting isn't enough. The barrels are then charred. Burning the wood draws out even more flavors and textures that infuse into the spirits. The barrels are first used to make American whiskey and bourbon. And when finished, Bacardi buys them. Once in Puerto Rico, they're sent to the Cooper room to be cleaned and stripped of any whiskey flavor. After a 24-hour cleansing bath, they give any damaged barrels a little TLC.
after final inspection, the barrel is ready for the rum bases. Before filling them, the crew pumps the rum bases from the storage vats through a charcoal filtration system. These large steel columns hold a natural carbon filter proprietary to Bacardi. The rum stock seeps through slowly to ensure quality. This removes any impurities from the fresh rum. After filtration workers pump the rum bases into these wooden barrels, each barrel is filled with either the aguardiente or redistillado. And then make sure that there is no leak, that the integrity of the cast is fine. Uh, we are ready to go. Workers fill 1,800 barrels a day with more than 330,000 liters of rum base. Then, the crew moves the barrels from the filling station to the aging warehouse. And what happens inside is a little bit of black magic. What goes in doesn't come out. In the Bacardi aging warehouse, Mother Nature does her thing. The young rum bases age in darkness, slowly maturing into a flavorful rum. The barrel is just an incredible and lovely instrument that helps us to mature the product. While they age, the spirits change in texture, color, flavor, and aroma. After one year, we are going to have sort of a pale yellow. But as we are moving into uh, six, eight years, then that pale yellow starts turning to amber. And because of the placement and conditions of each barrel, the bases age differently. These two barrels are not necessarily the same, of course. And on the other hand, Mother Nature is going to have different effect in both of them. The tropical heat and humidity affect the aging process, too. The air permeates the barrel, allowing the rum to extract complex flavors from the wood. Joe has to monitor these barrels carefully to manage any evaporation loss. For example, today is a typical day. It's probably uh, 98 and extremely humid. The one that we are trying to get a sample at now probably has lost anywhere. Then he tastes it. But first, he dilutes the 150 proof fire water. Once I'm able to lower that, then a lot of nice notes of fruits and flowers are able to come out of solution. And you then are able to perceive an incredible, an incredible uh, bouquet. We love to drink rum. This is, uh, this is our life. This is what we do for a living, OK? But re remember, always with moderation. Once he identifies the batches he wants to blend, he mixes them following the family secret formula to hit the exact flavor profile of a specific Bacardi rum. Along with his co-worker, Willie Ramos, 
they search the enormous warehouse for the best of the best rum bases, many aged up to 20 years and beyond. His selection will be given to the master family blenders for them to blend the new rum. But first, he needs to evaluate each barrel. This is, you said this was 19? This is over 1920, yeah. 1920? See, Willie? Wow, that's this, a beautiful color. This half a beautiful color. Check, check this out. I think he has the proper profile that we are looking for. Wow, this alone, Maestro, is fantastic. In this special edition, age is a major selection criteria. There are a few occasions that, that we uh, received very, uh, very nice surprise. We was uh, pulling some uh, real old product, and we came out with a barrel that uh, has been with us for like uh, over, you know, uh, 28, 30 years. With each barrel they tap, he analyzes the richness, aromas, and smoothness. This one is going to do the trick. I hope it works out after a, I mean. I think it will. His goal is to narrow it down to around 20 rum bases for the family master blenders. How about if you use this one, too? That would be an option. Get me the really dark one, please. The really dark one? OK. All righty. Once he finalizes the selection, he passes it on to the master family blenders to begin the process of blending the new rum. Here in the jury room, the family works their blending magic each bringing his own experiences to the table. Which one you prefer the most, and in order? There's all so good that it, it's a matter of preference. It's, it's, it's very good, it's amazing. Joe watches in anticipation. Very nice, very impressive. Each of us looking for uh, a rum that's going to provide uh, continuity. So something that uh, will certainly you know, build on what came before, but with perhaps a, a little bit of a twist, a little bit of a flavor uh, that people aren't uh, accustomed to. Collectively, they must create four different rums and then vote which one will become the special 150th anniversary rum. Excellent, excellent. And the tasting itself is very difficult because the product actually changes in the glass uh, over time. But can they agree on just one blend? After all, they're family. Somebody's cheating, somebody's looking at my, at my paper, paper teacher. Don't look at my paper. <laughs> On a typical day, Bacardi produces and bottles thousands of liters of Bacardi rum. When the rums have aged to Joe's specifications, he sends the barrels from the aging warehouse to the filling station for siphoning. Workers pump the rum into these large vats where they're blended together. Then they transfer the blended rum to the shipping trucks. This highly potent rum bulk is undiluted at 150 proof. Finally, 
it's transported to the processing and bottling facility in Jacksonville, Florida, where it becomes the finished rum we buy at the store. This fresh delivery has just arrived from Puerto Rico. If I could just have you park in this first spot right over here. All right, thank you. Mitch Schultz is part of a team that oversees the entire processing plant. It's his job to check the quality and dilute the rum with water before sending it to bottling. We check off each seal to make sure that each seal is still intact and we, the tanker has not been opened whatsoever. This rum comes in at over 150 proof, so it's extremely flammable. pumps the rum into one of the 1.9 million liter tanks. I take a sample from the tank to take to our quality control laboratory where they check the proof and they also set it for a five person taste and aroma. Hey, Calvin, how you doing? Hey, Mitch, how are you? Good, I've got a... Uh... Every step along the way, Mitch personally tastes the rum in a controlled laboratory to ensure it meets Bacardi standards. Uh, it's out of over 150 proof, so you wouldn't want to take this straight on, otherwise you might uh, fall over. So he adds a quick shot of purified water. I'm looking for that woody, smooth taste that is known for Bacardi rums. And now that I've tasted my, uh, my standard, I'm gonna taste my sample to ensure that it uh, meets the same quality. And it conforms very nicely. Now he dilutes all the rum with filtered water to ensure absolute purity. He pushes in about one part water and one part rum. It takes two hours to fill the 132,000 liter tank. After it's mixed, the alcohol is diluted to around 80 proof. Now, it's ready for bottling. These three production lines run for 24 hours, five days a week, filling up to one million bottles of Bacardi Superior rum each day. This is where the real fun begins. Now they're gonna go up. You have to watch the sensors here. It's production supervisor Joy Ayala's job to ensure every single bottle is sent down the bottling line smoothly. That is uh, reset that button, and then the machine's gonna go. If it's slightly off, it gets rejected and put in the back of the line. Now it's time for one final taste test. Does the Bacardi rum taste like a Bacardi rum? It's not everyday employees get to taste alcohol on the job. But for select employees at Bacardi, sipping rum is not only encouraged, but required. 
Every day, five employees trained in the art of tasting Bacardi rums come to the quality laboratory and participate in a comparison test. We taste every batch that gets produced here at Bacardi facility before it goes out the door. They're presented six glasses. One glass is the control, or how Bacardi Superior is supposed to taste. And another is a blind control, which they must identify too. Their goal is to determine if the other four samples taste the same or are significantly different from the controls. So far, the first three that I have done have matched the control. There's no significant differences. By this stage, it is rare to find a problem with the rum. It's a rewarding moment for the employees to sit back and taste the fruits of their labor. This is an enjoyable part of our day. We're proud of our product, and we en enjoy our product as much as the consumer. And when the final glass is tested and every passes, the rum is ready for the world. But I have to say goodbye because more than likely, I'm not gonna see it again. Goodbye, my good friend. Here, they store more than one million cases of rum in their enormous 7,400 square meter warehouse. They ship to customers worldwide. Back in Puerto Rico, the master family blenders have created four new rum blends. Now, they must decide which one is their favorite. I find it so good that instead of tasting it, I'm gonna drink it. The votes are cast. They'll create just 1,000 bottles of this special 150th anniversary rum for the family and limited public. Long live the Long live the after days of tasting, they make their final selection. The vintage rum bases Joe chose are a success. I like the color. I love the color a lot. Now it's his job, along with Jose, to manually blend the new rum created by the masters. Oh, amazing. Much better now, huh? Like? We are going to be using, Jose, this barrel, this barrel, maybe that one with these four. We should be able to accomplish our task today. This is going back in time. This is how our forefathers used to do it. We are gonna do it like in the old way, using pumps and get them from the barrel directly to a bigger oak tank. I can tell you what is in each one of these barrels. 
it's, this is a, a secret blend. I can tell you that it's incredible, an incredible blend. It's smooth, extremely aromatic, and really give you a very lovely, lasting impression. This will make uh, Don Facundo Bacardi proud. And after 150 years, the family reunites to continue the tradition and enjoy a glass in tribute to the founder's rum.